Sometimes we follow the road, but then we encounter obstacles. And when this happens, if you look really well, there is an easy way to cross this. The obstacle is an illusion. But if you believe that that's the stop, it will be a stop for trespassing, loitering, forbidden by law. So if you follow every direction, it will be really hard to get to where you want to be. I think most of the times it really pays off to walk off the bit of the beaten path. Path. That's the expression, right? Uh, what I mean is, if you just follow, you know, the obvious path, if you just follow what other people tell you to do, if you just follow every advice you hear, you, the chances are you might get lost on the way. You know, you, you might be going in very different directions. And uh, I really think our biggest power comes when we focus, you know, like when we believe in something and we face the adversity. Because when you really want something, life will throw curveballs at you. You know, like things will happen. Uh, it might seem that it's impossible to do, you know, like life tests you to check if you really want to get what you what you're asking or what you what you want to get out of life so in other words don't be afraid of walking your own path you know like take what you can learn from others that already did what you're trying to do but learn the patterns you know don't try to repeat exactly what other people did to achieve their goals you have to find your own way there will also be moments where things get dark. Like when you lose a job or, you know, like when you're, when the studio that you work for closes or the financial fortunes change and you get laid off or even, I don't know, you have a personal problem, right? Like we all have problems. Uh, just know that that's also part of the journey, you know? We need to go through these moments to get better on the other side. And I feel like nowadays, there is a constant drive to comfort, to avoiding the darkness, avoiding discomfort, avoiding conflict. And I think this is, it can lead to pretty bad outcomes, you know? It can lead to you being stuck uh, to stagnating, you know, like being afraid of taking risks, being afraid of uh, trying to fix a situation that you know is wrong, right? Like to speak up. We need to have courage, you know, to go through these moments and uh, just keep, keep on pushing, you know, like when life throws these moments at us. See them as a blessing and not as a curse or as a problem here is an example of a good place to be as an artist you know it's a path that is still visible but it's not too visible you know there's still some unknowns right there's a part of the past that we can't see and as an artist like we should always be looking for this path you know, like be in a place where you're challenging yourself, where you don't know what you're doing. 
like a it's very easy to get really good at something, get a lot of recognition for that, and then only do that. But what happened is, at least for me, uh, after a while, this gets old, you know, doesn't challenge you anymore. You feel stagnated and you will probably lose motivation if that happens. So look for the uphill, look for the challenge, you know, like face your fears that's how you get to the other side so here i am almost at my destination today and uh i was just thinking about shortcuts because if you see to get where i am it's kind of a long way but there was a shortcut here like a little trail i don't know if you can see in the video and uh I, I just climbed it through here because it would be a nice physical challenge first, uh, save me some time. But the thing with the shortcut is it can be a double-edged sword, right? I could have slipped here and uh, fucked myself up, but I was I took a calculated risk. I, I know my body, I know what I can do, you know, like I was being very conscious when I was climbing this. And that's a good mindset to have when you're challenging yourself to be conscious of your limits, you know, like you push your limits little by little, like you don't push too much before you know yourself because chances are you might get hurt. So not not even just physically but also mentally or right in uh, other ways so look at this beautiful view and uh yeah i'm almost here at the destination it's a rock that i want to sit down and then talk to you over there all right so I finally made it to the top. My heart's racing a little. <laughs> the sun is brutal. But I love this view here. It's so peaceful up here. Like when I look at the freeway, I can see that it's like a, like the bloodline, right? of the place like these cars are going back and forth no stop you know like at the same speed and that's the where our life happens right like our civilization our civilized life happens and when we are in the freeway we are in this autopilot mode like we could be with our thoughts or somewhere else but the fact is on the freeway, you need to pay attention. You know, you're always looking to stay safe. And the analogy here for our purpose and intent is be careful when you get in the autopilot mode, you know, because you might be driven to a place where it's not necessarily your best interest because you were guided there, because you were followed, you were driven there so always listen to your intuition see where you're going analyze if you're going the direction that you want to go and adjust if you have to correct the course and uh, lastly before I, I move on i just love to see this contrast of the freeway the apartments is like a oasis an island of comfort and fun but over there is the wilderness you know the nature is way there so i love i love this combination when i was living in brazil i was living in sao paulo and in sao paulo there is no uh nature pretty much you know it's only concrete jungle and that was very hard to live there like now i see now that i have this contrast i can see how good uh being in nature can be.
Okay, so we are here finally. And with this video, I want to answer the question that I get very often. How do you get a job in the games industry? This is probably the number one question that I get asked. And uh, I wanted to have a video where when people ask me this question and if they're really serious, you know, about figuring it out, you know, like then they can watch this video. It will probably be a little longer, right? Like it's not a five minutes answer. So if you're looking for a quick answer, you're not going to find here. And the other thing that I uh, want to uh, iterate is look for patterns, you know, like I'm going to tell some stories and instead of trying to replicate what I'm saying, like one to one, try to understand the patterns because then you see how those patterns of like how the patterns in your life affect the outcome of your efforts. And that's how you can have real change, you know, like don't try to be like someone else. Don't try to live someone else's life or do what people are doing, like find your own voice, find your own path, your own way. And you will see that when you are in the right path, the doors just open to you. It's like magic, you know, like um, the things just happen, you know, like you meet the right people at the right time or the, the right person sees your work at the right time, you get email from a recru recruiter out of the blue, you know, like things just happen. I, most of the jobs that I have, I didn't have to apply, you know, especially after having a certain level of experience, the jobs just come to me. But when I was starting out, it was not like that, right? Like I had to create from my career from, from scratch. So in this video, I want to first talk about how I got here and then discuss some of the patterns that you can apply to your life. Uh, and, and again, like I, I really stress this. As you watch this, I urge you to see through your own eyes, through your own perspective, you know, like try to see the patterns, not necessarily the story literally, you know, like I'll, I'll help you with this. So, so to get started, uh, like many of you watching this, I, I grew up in a country that didn't have like a games industry, right? It was a very hard thing to do. Like there was very few jobs. So I started first by just making uh, maps for Counter-Strike. And I really loved doing that. Like I was doing a whole day if I could, you know, like during my teenage years, I was spending way too much time you know like i was it was a passion and uh back then i only got a computer when i was 15 years old and uh we didn't have a fast internet in brazil like a uh, dsl was not a thing back then you know like most of you don't even know what dsl is but it's basically like you 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 can be on the internet as long as you can and you're not charged by the minute you know like the first uh, time I got internet, it was charged by the minute. So it was very expensive to go on the internet. So we, I would only go to the internet, you know, like to download programs or textures or, you know, like this stuff. But there was no social media back then. There were forums, you know, like, uh, and forums were nice because they united people with common interests. And I really miss this in social media because social media is a public forum, right? Like everyone with very different backgrounds, very different opinions, different interests. They're all playing the same game. And uh, I, I miss the times when we had the forums, you know, like where we could give feedback to each other and those forums were brutal. So I spent a lot of like years, you know, like working on maps, learning new things, posting my work on the forums and, and getting like, like ripped to shreds, you know, like the feedback was brutal. Like you kids got it easy today, you know, like you post on Twitter and everyone is like, oh my God, that's beautiful, that's amazing. But back then, even like to get a, a good compliment, it was real fucking hard, you know, like people were brutal. There was a lot of competition and um, competition is great because it, it forces you to get better, right? Like you either get better or you lose. And for many of us watching this, we don't want to lose, right? We want to have a result. So we work hard 
to not be a loser. <laughs> so those first years, you know, it was all about developing my artistic sense, my design skills, you know, like my technical skills. It's about, it was about learning the tools, learning the trade. You, you don't get good overnight, you know, and back then we didn't even, I didn't even have like this perspective of like, oh, that's how long it takes to get a job. Like I didn't even know if it was possible to get a job because like, as I said, there was no games industry in Brazil, you know, like to get a visa to United States for me would be impossible at the time because you, you needed to have like really high, uh, like awards or like recognition in your area, which I didn't have, or you needed to have a bachelor's degree, which I also didn't have. So for me, it was like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing this. And, you know, and I know that one day things will happen. So that's a, a good mindset to have to happen you know like have the patience and believe with every cell in your body that like one day it will happen you know like what you're looking for will happen you know if it takes one year two three four five ten years doesn't matter you will do whatever it takes to get it you know like if you really want to do it and um so like moving on uh at some point i had a portfolio right i had a few maps I was already modeling, I knew how to make props and textures, unwrapping, like all that stuff. So I put a portfolio together and they sent to the biggest game company in Brazil, the game studio, it was called South, South Logic Studios. And they were doing like a outsourcing for like next gen games, you know, like Xbox 360 were called next gen back then. And they also had a game called Deer Hunter Tournament with their own engine. It was a hunting game, like with normal maps, like Spackler, like all the, all the good stuff. And uh, so I sent my stuff to them and they replied like, I think a week after, and they were very nice. They just said, oh, it's very cool that you sent your portfolio, but right now we are not hiring anyone, you know, but we will consider you in the future. So at least I got on their radar, right? And I forgot about that and then about one year later, I got a message from one of the artists there. And he was like, oh, you know, like we're starting a new project here. And I remember your portfolio back then and it was really cool. Uh, do you have an updated portfolio? And then I just rushed, you know, like, and I, I, uh, I put a new portfolio together. I sent to them and then uh, we interviewed and they were asking me like if I could, if I could do normal maps and I could do bake. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah I know all this stuff. But I didn't know shit. Um, like I knew the idea, but I never done it, right? But I just lied to them. I just told them, oh yeah, I can do it. Give me a chance. I just wanted a chance. So I worked as a contractor in this game, you know, like they gave me some assets to make and it was an incredibly helpful experience. Like it was really awesome because this guy, uh, Fernando, he gave some amazing feedback and direction, you know, like he had a lot of patience because the, I delivered some stuff that was not up to the standard, but then he would be, he would give clear instructions and I would go back and learn and redo, you know, and get it right. So I'm really thankful to him, you know, for that opportunity and for that coaching. So what's the pattern here? Uh, we need mentors in life, you know, like if you think about like in the medieval times, in our ancient times, like a blacksmith, right? They didn't learn how to make swords from the eater or from books, right? They learned from a master. They were apprentices for years, you know, until they, they could do it. And, uh, and I'm not saying this just because uh, I have the tutorial, right? And the, actually that was the main reason that I made the tutorial because I wanted to have a program that is like a self mentorship because doing mentorship is very hard you know like it, it takes a lot of work and there is a limit to how much someone can take right as as mentees like how many mentees one can take so i put all the all that i learned for the mentorship and i try to make a program you know that you can do like a mentorship yourself but anyway the pattern here is you, you probably will not will not learn like everything in a vacuum you know you're gonna need mentors you're gonna need people that will show you the way but also you can't be annoying. Like you can't be the person who is like, oh, you know, like give me for free, right? Like 
it's it's a it's a transa transaction right like i was delivering good work for him and he was giving me feedback so that was a win-win situation but if you're one of those people you know they're just bugging other people like oh give me the secret you know what's the shortcut and like i did that <laughs> and a lot of times you antagonize people you know so uh, just something to keep in mind so after the I, I i did that contract it was the first time i made any money you know like with uh with games uh with environment right and uh, i used the money to buy a uh a, a wacom like a tablet for for drawing so i, inv I invested the money in something that would give me more returns and that's another important lesson you know like before you have a financial stability you need you need to be wise with your money and that doesn't mean like just saving every penny and being super frugal you know like it's about being smart you know like don't waste on bullshit right like and save some of it invest you know like buy new hardware like things that will help you on your journey buy books courses mentorship memberships whatever it is right like use that money to uh, accelerate your growth and uh so after at that time i was just working on mods again you know and i was in, in part of this mod called insurgency and we were all working all over the world like people from everywhere and we were working for free like completely for free it was a total conversion of half-life 2. and i mentioned this because the best work that I've done is when there's no money involved, you know? Like when you're working just for love, just for passion, you work in a different way. So that's another advice I give to you, you know? And I look for a project that you are passionate about, that you're going to be like, you know, excited to work on. Get together with friends, you know, make uh, game jams. Uh, participate in contests that's another way to like don't think if you're gonna win or if you're gonna lose you know just par participate uh, because and make a point of finishing your project you know it doesn't matter if you come in 20th place the point is to finish and uh, I participated in a lot of contests and they were always a great time because you have a deadline so you need to do something like that forces you to make decisions you build portfolio, you build recognition, uh, you, you get experience, you know, and who knows, you might even win and get some awards, right? That you can use uh, later. Uh, so then at some point I was, I, I had a job at a, I was working at a print shop. <laughs> it was like a, a place where like people would go to print stuff, you know, like to make business cards. I was like a, a graphics designer with a Corel draw. And that job was uh, was pretty. Oh man, I, I didn't like the job. It was not bad. It was it, it was just not challenging, and it was really long. I had to be there all day. Uh, the the boss was always watching me, you know, so I couldn't, you know, like read or do stuff. Like if there were no clients, she was on my ass. Like oh, you should be working. You should be practicing. She was really annoying. Uh, and then I remember one day. I I still remember the day because. The moments that change your life, you remember. You remember where you were, you remember the weather, the time, the temperature, the clothes you're wearing. Like you remember all the details because those moments are like in more mystical terms. It's like there's a big change happening, right? It's like you're shifting uh, dimensions in a way, if I could put in, in these words. So for me, it was this day where I, between a client, I was just browsing the news and uh, there was on the front page of the biggest Brazil ne uh, website, the news that uh, Ubisoft was going to open a studio in Sao Paulo. And when I saw that right away, I knew I was like, okay, this is my chance. I'm going to make it work. Doesn't matter what I have to do. I will work there. It's like, I remember, it's like uh, something opened in my mind. And uh, reading the interview, the director of the studio, super awesome guy from France, like one of the first guys at Ubisoft, uh, he was saying that the studio was going to focus on games for uh, girls, for uh, like casual games for girls for Nintendo DS. 
And my portfolio was the opposite of this, right? It was only shooter stuff, like Iraq war, sci-fi stuff. Uh, there was no cute girl, low poly stuff. So I knew that I had to create something to show them that I can do the job. And here's another lesson. No one will hire you if you don't demonstrate that you can do the job. Like it's not a charity. Like you're not gonna be hired because you deserve or because you worked so hard or whatever excuse. You, you're gonna be hired because you do a job and you do it well. That's the bottom line. That's why you're gonna get hired. And so at the time I was working full time and going to design school at night, right? So I would get to work at like 7.30 or 8, was super early. Um, and then go to university at night and come home around 11. And then I would work on my portfolio until like three or four. And I did this for maybe three weeks. Uh, it was really hard, but I created this low poly bedroom and I put on my portfolio. So then I applied and it worked out, you know, like I was, I remember they were saying that they got almost 10,000 applicants for the job. And they chose 20 out of those 10,000. So it was, I don't know if the com competition was probably like not that, like 10,000 good people, right? It was probably like maybe like uh, 50, like good people, right? Uh, but anyways, the lesson here is it looks like it was lucky, right, for me. But luck is when preparation meets the opportunity, right? Like when the opportunity showed up, I was ready. I had a portfolio. I just needed to include a new map. Uh, I already done interviews before, so I could do that, you know? So it all worked out. I worked at Ubisoft for two years. It was an amazing time with an amazing group of people. It's really sad how the studio uh, closed before we could reach our full potential. Uh, but anyways, that's a story for another video. And when the studio closed down, I was uh, working on a scene, like to update my portfolio. It was a modular scene. It was around the time where Mass Effect came out. And I was blown away by the game and I loved how everything was like made modularly and how colorful the game was. So I wanted to learn to make that kind of art. And I was working on this scene at home. And uh, the lesson here is like, you, you gotta have this beginner's mind, you know, never stop learning. Like at Ubisoft, I was working with DS, PSP, like low poly stuff. But at home, I was creating, you know, like a uh, Unreal 3 environments with normal maps and specular maps and stuff. So always be learning on your free time, always, never stop. And uh, so Ubisoft closed, right? And they promised that they would help us, you know, get a job in other Ubisoft offices. But the fact is they didn't, <laughs> you know, like one of the guys there helped himself. But that's OK, because uh, things worked out much better had I gone to Ubisoft, because I made up my mind that I was going to leave Brazil. I wanted to move to Europe. I didn't think United States was a realistic choice at the time because of the visa. And uh, I finished this environment and uh, I started applying everywhere to all my favorite studios like Capcom, DICE, Remedy, you name it, everywhere, uh, Green. Uh, and none of those studios replied me, like not a single one. And I don't think it's because my work was bad, it's just because it's not effective to apply for the website, you know, because they get so much spam. Uh, a lot of times they don't even see your application. So I was posting this map, right, on, on the internet and it started to to get some attention. You know, it was featured on Polycount. And if you go to my website, it's the Zest Foundation map. And uh, it was featured on Polycount on the top for on the top banner, you know, so my name was very prominent there. It got a lot of eyes. And at the same time, I was living in Sao Paulo in the same beauty. I was living with my aunt there. And my great grandmother was, li she lived in the same beauty too. And every day after work, I would come and stay with her. And uh, she was in the end of her life, you know, and I really wanted to enjoy those last moments with her because I just loved her so much. She was such a fun person to be around, an amazing woman. And uh, so you will see why I'm saying this. 
and I kind of put in my mind that, you know, like while she was still alive, I would be there with her. So as the days went by after Ubisoft went down and I was applying and I was in some freelance and stuff, she started to, cause she, she got a little heavy, right? She couldn't walk so much anymore. So she was losing the joy of living, you know, she was losing the desire to live. She was getting sad. And she started having these dreams, you know, that her husband was there to take her to the afterlife. And, you know, and if you've been around people who pass away, a lot of times, even if they're religious or they're not religious and not spiritual, they see, you know, like people that come to help them make the passing. And she was definitely having this. And she started having uh, pain. And, okay, to make a really long story short, she passed away, right? And uh, so on the day of her funeral, my whole family was there. So in a way, it was good to see everyone together, right? Like it never happens that everyone is together in the same place. So it was sad from one side, but other side was very happy. And that day is, is like, that's the day that I knew. It was clear to me that life is much more than what initially meets the eye. You know, like life is not just numbers, Newtonian physics. There is much more to life that we don't understand that happens in a different plane. And then it materializes in a way that we are like, oh, shit, that was good. You know, like good that it happened. And on the day that we buried her, when I came back home, I opened my email and no joke, there was an email from the recruiter from Blizzard. And he was like, oh, I saw your email, I saw your environment. And uh, would you like to do an art test? And I was like, oh, oh, of course, right? So as you can see, like, I kind of put in my mind that I was going to stay there while she was alive. And when that situation happened, you know, you can call just a coincidence, but like, what would be the mathematical odds that this would be just a coincidence in that specific day? You know, like one in who knows, like how many trillions, right? He didn't message me before. He didn't message me after. He messaged on the moment, on the moment that I got home. So look for signs, you know, like when you're in the right path, life opens the doors for you. And this is very subtle sometimes. It's through like an encounter, it's through a message you receive, it's through many ways, you know, like life communicates with you in many different ways. Life wants you to succeed when you're doing the right thing, you know, like when you're in the good path, when you're in the path of development, growth, life will happen you. So I got that email and I was working this art test, you know, it, it was a challenge. I worked in the art test for six, seven months. And now I see a lot of people complaining that like, oh, I made an art test and it was not paid and I didn't get the job. Like, and you know, like you did the art test because you wanted to, you were not forced. And um, whether you like it or not, I know many people who got amazing jobs because of an art test. So if you get a, uh, an art test for like a studio that you love for like a game you really like you know for something that you really want give your best don't think about money don't think about you know at the end of the day you can always use that art test on your portfolio so it's not going to be wasted work so i made the art test and it was uh and they loved it and they brought me here for the interview and it was Another fortunate turn of events is they forgot to do a phone interview with me and I would probably have failed because my English was pretty bad back then. So I got pretty lucky there. Uh, so I had some time, you know, to practice my spoken English. So I came here for the interview and I remember like that moment when I crossed the gates of Blizzard, I was thinking like, oh, I have no regrets in life. Like whatever happened in life took me to this place, you know, and I'm really glad for everything I've done so far because my life starts here. That's what I was thinking, you know, and uh, the interview went amazing. I met the team and we, it was like, we just, uh, what's the word? Like we connected instantly, 
like with everyone, you know, like it was amazing. And this was for the Project Titan, uh, the game that eventually became Overwatch. And, uh, and I got hired on the same day. Like uh, after my lunch interview, the recruiter, he came to me and was like, oh, dude, you're not going to believe, but they really want to hire you. Like, do you want to do you want to join us? And I said, of course. And uh, and they were nice because they even gave me a bit more than what I asked because I was like, I asked it for a number that was lower than the the base pay for the position, right? And they were nice. They were like, oh, you know, like we put a little bit more because living in Irvine is expensive. So I had ten amazing years there, made amazing friends, had amazing experiences, right? I was meant to be there during that time. Life put me there, and. Uh, and it's the same for you. You have a place where you're meant to be. You have a mission that you came here to perform. You, you have a duty you're here to execute. And only you can tell, only you can find out what it is. And life will help, help you, you know? Don't get so stuck on like, oh, I, I want to work in this place because if I don't work there, I'm fucked. Like I never even thought about working for Blizzard because I was like, oh, I don't, I don't have the skill to work there. Maybe 10 years in the future, I can try. I didn't even apply for Blizzard because first I thought that, you know, they would even consider me like if DICE and other students are ignoring me like Blizzard, like they're not even going to look at me, right? And then second, I thought it would be impossible to get the visa because it was much harder to get United States visa than European visa. And look what happened. I got a job at Blizzard and the visa for the United States that I thought was impossible. So why I'm saying all of this is I think it made it very clear how a lot of the good things that happened in my life were not just because of me, it's because life was helping me to, you know? And this happens when we are in the right vibration. We need to have our thoughts in the right frequency. Like we have to have a positive mindset and I'm not talking about just like a oh, uh, naive positive that, oh yeah, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. It's more like, look, let's do the best work. Let's get better. Let's improve. You know, let's do something that will touch people's souls. You know, like life will help, it, help you because life wants you to do good work. Life wants you to be positive. You know, like life wants to improve and we will help you. So I know this was a long answer to a question, but the main takeaways here is things take time. You know, if you just got started, uh, don't get frustrated if you don't get a job right away. You know, like a lot of you, you started using Blender like six months ago and you're frustrated because you didn't get hired at Blizzard. Like, come on, you know, for a lot of us, it took like, for me, it took like 12 years to get there. Uh, I had to have many other experiences to have there, to, to get there. And then once you do that stuff, you see that, oh, there's much more to life. You know, there is not just one destination. We're always going more and more and more. So enjoy the ride. Do the best work you can, you know, like keep an open mind. Uh, help others. Be humble. Like be brave. You know, don't take things personally. Like if studios ignore you, doesn't matter like i know people at blizzard that they apply they i think they applied and they they only got the job on the fifth or sixth try <laughs> you know and now like this person is a director there like he had to try five or six times and things didn't happen for any reasons you know maybe the position got closed or there was an internal mobility like just you need to have pers uh, perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. You need to have determination and focus and energy day after day. If you feel sad, you need to find a way to overcome your sadness. You know, you can't dwell on the depression. You can't dwell on sadness. We all feel that from time to time and we should transmute it to something positive. You know, like the people that get stuck in their trauma, in their depression, in their sadness, they get stuck there. And we need to heal. We need to grow and overcome this. You know, that's the point. Life is always unfolding. So this is, wow. There's a huge bird fly. 
I wish I could show, but now it's, it's gone. I can't change the camera. But yeah, I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, I know it was a very long answer, but I hope that this will help you see the patterns in your life, you know, help you have an open mind, open eyes, open ears, and just let life help you. Help life to help you, if that makes sense. So good luck on your journey. I wish you the best. I really appreciate everyone that watches these videos and leave a comment, you know, like, let me know if this was useful to you, if you like this format. Um, first time I'm trying something like this. Uh, getting some sun is always good, you know, you get some vitamin D, some testosterone, like we need this, we can't just live in the computer, but enough preaching. <laughs> I think that's a lot of information here, so thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this and if you have any requests for videos, uh, just leave a comment and I'll do my best to get to it. So have a great day and i see you next time. Peace. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you're looking to step up your environment art skills, I invite you to check my environment art creation course, Environment Art Mastery. This is a massive course that took me more than two years to put together and contains everything that I learned about environment art creation after more than a decade in the games industry. The course contains everything you need to know to be able to come up with your own ideas and take them to completion by using an easy-to-follow process that breaks down the creative process in logic steps. This process can be used to create all kinds of environments, no matter the style, theme or engine. If you want to know more, visit environmentartmastery.com or watch the deep dive video in my channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.